us now in our studio, which doubles as our conference room. Keep on here with Spring Sports Preview. We have brethren, track and field coach Kyle Griffin join us. Kyle, happy Thursday. How are we feeling today? We were on the track yesterday in March in northern Michigan. You can't beat that. I haven't done that in, I mean, this is seven years of coaching, and this is the first time that I've pulled that off before spring break. So I'll take it. That's awesome. So talk to me about the team this year. Obviously, you lost a couple bodies. The boys sign out a whole lot. Girls sign out a whole lot. But, I mean, who did you guys lose from last year's team, and who are you excited to see this year? So, yeah, boys' side, we lost Gav who was kind of our do anything, do everything. You throw him in the mile, he'll do it. You throw him in the hundred, he'll do it. He tried discus at the end of the year. Like, he was willing to do anything if it involved the track he wanted to be out there. Um, so he'll be a tough, just kind of puzzle piece to replace. Um, and then, you know, Logan, Logan Grosset was a nice that he started running track last year and was kind of willing to step up just about anywhere we needed him. Um, and then we lost an exchange kid, Nico, that... Uh, and came on pretty strong towards the end of the year. Um, but boys' side, you know, we bring back Lucas, who was a hundredth of a second right off in the one tens. Um, so, you know, he's looking to go out on a, on a high note. Uh, White Cloud isn't in our region this year. <laughs> so we got that going for us a little bit. Um, yeah, so, I mean, you know, he's ready to make a strong season. George uh, Phillips was out doing some. He went to a few shot put camps over the summer. He's doing indoor. He did a couple indoor meets over the winter. Um, so excited to see what he can do. And then you got you know Bryce Dicer that has one heck of a hundred runner. Um, and then we're adding a few kids that haven't been out before. Uh, bring in a couple freshmen that are coming up from the middle school ranks. Some solid sprinters between Levi and Shane. Um, and then we've got Garrett, the big old the big old tree trunk is going to be out there. Um, so he hasn't run since eighth grade. He was in the weight room last year, but he, he's coming back out. So excited to see what he can do. He wants to, he voluntarily wants to run the 400, which you don't see a whole lot. Get him back out to high jump. Get him maybe in some shot and some disc. Excited to see what he can do there on the boys' side. Um, and then girls' side, I'm afraid to say that we didn't lose anyone because I'm afraid that I'm going to hurt someone. Uh, <laughs> but off the top of my head, it, I mean, I'm, Pulling up last year's roster real quick, I don't. Yeah, we lost zero girls um, from a season ago, and so you figure that's zero girls from a team that had board, almost all state in long jump, an inch. Up. Stella hit automatic qualifier the week after regionals in high jump. You know, a drop baton away from states in the four by two. Um, those girls were board, that same 4x2 team, pretty darn close in the 4x1, um, and then just adding girls to that. You know, we brought up uh, one, two, three, four. We've got five freshman girls on the team this year um, to go with a couple sophomores and juniors and seniors that have come out. So girls' team is far and away the biggest it's been in the time that I've been there. And so when you take what was already a real solid team, third in the conference last year, and you're just throwing more bodies in there, we're, that one should be fun. Well, one, one kid I want to talk to you about was someone I've seen on volleyball and basketball and track as well, but kind of a, a glue kid, especially with her class led on, I think, the entire school, Maddie Biller. Yes. Last year, state qualifier, got a little nervous, but hey, you was a sophomore in that stage. I mean, it happens, but what are your expectations for her this year to try and get back to states? Um, I mean, she already PR'd this year. Um, she went down to, she, it would have been, I don't think it was at Grand Valley. She went to a couple indoor meets this, this winter. Um, I don't, it might've been at Saginaw, but went down and threw 32 over the winter. And she was, she was 31, six, I think at regionals last year. And so, I mean, she went out, she was with George. They went to thrower's camp out over at Benzie. Um, she was, she stole the school's indoor shot and was working working on that at home. She's made a little ring in her backyard. Um, that girl works and works and works and works. And the best thing about that is Cadence is right there with her a year under her. And Cadence watches her do that and wants to do the exact same thing. And so those two push each other constantly. They both went to they went first indoor meet of the year. They both shot, signed up for shot put. There was no discus. They saw weight throw. They're like, I mean, I mean, we're allowed to do two events, whatever, 20 bucks for shot put or 20 bucks for shot put and weight throw. 
both of them showed up to Grand Valley and hit the automatic qualifier for uh, indoor states and weight throw, um, just because they felt like doing it. But yeah, so I mean, Maddie is, especially on that thrower side, and I mean, she steps up, she wants to be a teacher, and she kind of fills the gaps, you know, I'm not a thrower, uh, Wardy's not a thrower, and so Maddie kind of takes over for us every now and then, and you know, if I'm over with some high jumpers and Melissa's over with some sprinters, whatever we're shaking out, there's a lot of times where I can trust Maddie to pull the throwers over, and she can kind of serve as a little impromptu coach sometimes. Yeah, that girl is a gigantic part of the team. One more girl I want to ask about, too. You guys did qualify from last year. A girl who I know wants to try everything, and I know last year you threw her a long jump out of nowhere, and then all of a sudden that's when you qualify for state, though. But with all these girls back, and with the ability and the versatility of Abby Kissling, how do you fold, fold, how do you fill up that puzzle to make sure everything fits right? The absolute best thing with her is and because of all of the other girls that we have, you know, that, I mean, Melissa and I run into one, one of the biggest problems that you can run into, which is we've got we've got probably six or seven girls that I would feel comfortable throwing in the four by one or the four by two, um, which is you know obviously a good problem to have. And Abby offers that ability that, you know, obviously you th- in our conference, borderline in our region, you throw her in any relay and they're going to have a shot at winning the thing. But what surrounds her means that we can pull her, we can pull her out of something. We can put her, she's going to compete for scoring. She's going to pe- compete for medals in the 100, the 200, the 400, the, you name it. And so she allows us that ability to play around with what she runs, play around with where she lands and you're still gonna have you're still gonna have one heck of a relay team because there are all those girls that are trying to emulate her and chase her, and she can go show out wherever we needed her need her to show out that day. You know, I want to throw it back to the beginning of the conversation here, where sort of the weather got brought up and whatnot, and I've been talking to some of the spring coaches, you know, during these segments and talking about you know what are those challenges from a track and field standpoint as a coach who's been doing it for a while when. Your start of the season is maybe always. You mentioned you got out there yesterday, but in your experience, I would assume you you put on the back burner a little bit because of this weather, because of the Northern Michigan lifestyle, and just what is that um, challenge for you as a coach to kind of get the kids in shape and get them in top form? Yeah, I mean the biggest for us is you know being as small a school as we are and being kind of out of the city as much as we are. Um, you know we can't. It's it's. We can't necessarily pop over to you know the Payne Aquatic Center and maybe get some cross, some cross training in. Um, you know we don't have an indoor track anywhere in the school at all, and so you have that constant balance between I need you guys running. You know our our first meet is at Manistee is the week we get back from spring break, and so you know I need you guys in shape. I need you guys ready to go. But at the same time, if we try to pound you and pound you and pound you and pound you. You're gonna have shin splints before April even hits, let alone May. So that that's the biggest problem that we run into is trying to find that balance between. I mean, it's a lot of plyos, getting in the weight room a little bit, getting some running in the hallways, getting some sprints in the gym. Uh, when we're able to squeeze in there, we're adding some middle school sports this year, and so you know we've been sharing the gym with middle school baseball. Um, is getting ready to start up here pretty soon. You got elementary basketball, you know, the whole kit and caboodle. Um, but yeah, so I mean that's the biggest thing is trying to figure out that load management versus conditioning as well as you know going back to what our team looks like uh you know our our top performers in on our team right now are throwers their field event kids and their hurdlers which are probably the three events that are the toughest to emulate indoors you know when alexis was on the team she's a she was a two miler i could say hey lex it's 30 degrees and there's a foot of snow go run anyway and she'd do it uh, you, you can't necessarily emulate, you know, we don't, we don't have high jump pads inside. And so I can't necessarily get Stella going through her steps as well. We can't, you know, we don't have a ring for the throwers. Um, you know, especially the younger throwers, we've got, I think, three, four, maybe five brand new throwers on the team this year that they haven't set foot in a ring. Um, and so, you know, just those things that you miss out on being inside. What does it say about what they're able to achieve still, despite maybe not having those opportunities? It all comes back to them. I mean, it all boils down to the work ethic ethic that those kids have, the amount of work that they put in outside, the amount. And then once we are there, once we can be outside, once we can be on the track, at the pit, you know, in the in the ring, whatever it is, 
they don't waste the time. Because, I mean, they know, they look at track stuff on Instagram, they see kids pop up on TikTok, you know, they, they know that kids have been out outside doing full workouts since, you know, January, February, whenever it is. They see with those kids that come June, they're going to be on the same track as if they want to get to where they want to go. They know what those kids have been able to get done. And so, yeah, I mean, once we're out there, they don't waste it. I mean, you just yesterday... You know, we had, did a little bit of a weight room and band circuit on the inside. And then I said, all right, we're going to I mean, look at the track right now. I went out, took a picture. I was like, look at what this looks like right now. We're not wasting this. And got out there. They were sore. They were tired. We had done one heck of a plyo workout on Monday. They were kind of griping a little bit once they were in the weight room. But once we got out onto that track, not a single one of them said a word. And every single one of them just went because... They know there are only they get limited opportunities out there, so they are incredible at taking advantage of that. Last question for me here. I know every team every year has a different kind of vibe to it, different chemistry, different dynamic, different relationships. However, you have it. What is about this group that's different that you enjoy? It's that continuity. It you know, like I said, you're we've lost three kids over the course of the year, so you don't end. I mean, the lovely thing about coaching at Brethren, the lovely thing about teaching at Brethren is even those freshmen, every single one of them knows every kid on the team. Um, and so we haven't had to have, you know, you don't have to have that acclimation period. You don't have to have that getting to know you. I mean, one when they were in middle school, we're all out on the same track every single day anyway. And so just watching the kids over the course of this week, you know, jump right back into the swing of things as if it's just a, co- a continuation of last track season. And you see that even in the winter, just watching these kids recruit each other to go down to an indoor meet. It's, hey, you want to go run? I'm going to go run. You're a freshman. You need a ride. Hop in the car. We're going. None of it had anything to do with me. I put the I put the meets on the, on the kids' radar, said, hey, guys, this is go- coming up. Would be a cool thing to do. And all of them helped each other. All of them were out for each other. You know, I watched, again, going back to Maddie, uh, she convinced a girl in the hallway yesterday to come try throwing. She was like, hey, you might be a good thrower. Come try it out. Um, And so the girl got to practice. We were going in the weight room. I had them all splitting up into partners. And before anybody could say a word, Maddie went to her and said, hey, you're with me. You're going to come lift with me. Um, And so it's just that relationship that all the guys have. I mean, it just, it, it makes everybody want to be there because it, it's an awesome environment to be in. You know, throughout my short time here with track and field coaches, you kind of get, uh, you know, earlier today we talked to Eric Thummel and, and that's sort of the vibe of like, hey, court, sort of like random kids will come out for track and field just because they just want to check it out, right? And how often have you found some really talented kids who maybe haven't done it before and they've just decided to give it a shot on a random year? I mean, we there's always the few that you kind of know, whether you watch them in basketball or you watch them in football, whatever it happens to be, you watch them in volleyball, uh, that type of deal. But, you know, thinking back, I mean, this is a few years ago, but uh, I had a kid that was a freshman in my history class. He played baseball, and he was like the designated base, be- base dealer on the baseball team, basically, but he never wanted to run track because he hated the shorts. Um, and so finally I was like, Hey man, like we can get you some leggings. We can get you something. We can make it work. Um, and he came out and he wound up scoring in conference meets in the hundred as a freshman. Um, so, you know, that, that's one that jumps out to me. Um, I feel like Abby, Abby half counts because, you know, <laughs> she was never a jumper. And then all of a sudden she's a jumper. She was never a sprinter. And then all of a sudden was a sprinter. Um, you know, so shows she falls there, but, Yeah, a lot of it is just finding those kids that'll work, whether it's in the classroom, whether it's hearing from other teachers, whether it's hearing from other coaches. But yeah, I mean, a lot of times it comes down to a kid that uh, you know is going to come work. That's one of my favorite things about track is, you know, you have that, you, there's always that kid with the natural ability, but a good chunk of, you know, your fourth to sixth places in a meet, a lot of those are kids that have worked their tail off to get there. And so when we can find those, those are the ones that I know are going to become something a little bit. Okay. Well, Cal, we appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to come to the office and come chat with us. You betcha. Mm-hmm.